apparently there was an interview that uh this Euro Gamer website uh, did with, I guess it was one of the VPs or one of the developers, and it kind of gives you, it kind of gives you a little bit more uh, insight to like why they did these changes. So we're gonna go over this. Has anybody seen this? The the Euro Gamer article. They like interviewed. I forget what it was. It was like a VP or a developer or something like that. Um, somehow, somehow they released this uh, with the news yesterday because uh, this was this was published on the thirtieth. So we're just gonna go over what they say here and see if we get any more insights into like what they were talking about. But essentially. They, they released the news yesterday, by, by now everyone should know remote raids, prices, how you use them, or how many times you use them are changing in about a week. But I guess this is kind of a, a interview they released as, as the news dropped yesterday as well. So let's just see what it says. Let me just turn this down just a little background. Okay, as you can see, uh, Pokemon Go developer teases a blockbuster slate of summer features amidst major remote raid changes. So this is a pretty pretty big headline here. If this is actually true, let's see exactly what they're talking about here. Um, popular method of playing at home to be capped almost doubled in price was basically what happened. This is from Eurogamer, by the way. So. It's a little bit lengthy, but like obviously we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll see um, step by step what they're talking about. Pokemon Go Maker Niantic has announced a set of changes to remote raid gameplay in a bit to rebalance a lockdown air feature. It says has grown to overly dominate the app's economy and game balance. Uh, yeah, I think this is a this is kind of what we talked about yesterday from Niantic side. They really I really feel like the the remote rating thing is currently imbalanced mainly because a lot of people are using it right because it's such a such a great feature it's, it's like one of the most game-changing things within the era so that is pretty much true beginning next thursday the 6th of April, players will be limited to a cap of five, okay, per day. If you didn't know that, this is kind of a recap. Um, but it could change with certain events. We already know the cost is increasing from 100 to 195, 300 to 525 for the bundle. Um, to counteract some of this, a discounted three pack of in person raid passes will be added to the game shop while the end game. Excel candy resource will be made more abundant from in-person raids. Okay, a couple of things right there that just kind of popped off. The end game Excel candy. So they view Excel candy being the, the the final thing you need to do to level up Pokemon. That's interesting. We we kind of talked about like would it be interesting if they required another kind of evolution tool to get to like level 50 now but it, it seems like as according to this article Euro Gamer, which you know it regularly does interviews with with Niantic um, it does look like they're sticking to this XL system where you need to catch more of a specific thing to get the XL and so it's gonna the end game XL means in, meaning like that's pretty much what you're gonna have to do to potentially get it to like a future level 100 is basically what they're saying because we assume you could get to level 100 eventually um these are changes designed to nudge players away from remote raids and seem likely to spark a strong re reaction from some of the pokemon ghost many fans true that is true obvious in particular those who previously campaigned against the disappearance of the, of the apps many uh, lockdown air bonuses, which made the game easier to play. Yes, those are all true. 
Again, these changes seem to place the reality of how some fans want to play Pokemon Go in opposition to the vision set out by its creator Niantic. And this is this is the statement here. This this line here is essentially what's at play. So like Niantic, oh, Niantic has a vision, um, apparently supported by the Pokemon Company, because. We also have to understand the Pokemon company is behind the scenes approving all of these as well, right? This is their IP, it's their thing. Niantic is kind of just coming along. And this is this is basically Niantic's vision and then basically how um, people currently want to play. And that's 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 what's happening. So why was Niantic so sure these changes were necessary? Okay, this is actually what we asked yesterday. I should have, I should have found this yesterday. And this is, and if this is the stick, where exactly is the carrot? These are great questions. I, I was, I was wondering about this yesterday too. Because they're clearly taking a big hit on purpose. In advance of these changes being made public. Niantic invited me to speak with this veteran developer, Ed Wu, the company's um, Pokemon Go VP. Okay, so here we go. We talk over the decision in detail via an extensive Zoom chat. Uh, in it, we discuss the reasoning for these changes. Why, in Niantic's eyes, remote raids have become too convenient a shortcut, and how many people will likely be affected as well as why this is all happening now. Okay, awesome. In addition, Wu looks to the future, teasing the carrot still to come of new features designed to entertain trainers on their local streets this summer. And this is this is kind of what we um, kind of dove into yesterday, like just from their, their um, PokemonLive.com post, a lot of stuff was just like headlines and if you if you kind of read the details like there was some of the like referring back to an old post that led you into like more detailed stuff but was very vague and like i wasn't really i wasn't really sure what was going on but it, it seems like this is a systematic step by step to uh kind of completely 180 gameplay here so let's see what happens here finally we finished up with a more general chat about features players are hoping to see on the horizon, including Shadow Raids, whoa, and the eventual introduction of Pokemon God Ar Arceus. Okay, so not only are they saying um, the remote raids are, 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 are basically being changed, but they're teasing a new or some additional feature to help you Get into raids like I, I saw these I saw these kind of words yesterday I didn't know what they were talking about so I guess they're addressing this in this interview and then a potential shadow raids that's kind of cool but how does that how is that going to be you know any different from 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 a regular raid are we going to be able to get into shadow raids you know exclusively through campfire or like something like that it's a cool idea, but how are you going to change how you fundamentally get into the raids, right? Um, go here. It's a big and meaningful change to a huge part of the game. So as you might imagine, for a change of this magnitude, we have, of course, examined many possible alternatives. Will begins after beginning after thinking very carefully about this. What we're doing is relatively simple. Generally speaking, the goal is to keep remote raids as part of Pokemon Go, but to do so in a sustainable way. To do so in a sustainable way. They've, they've mentioned this word very, very, very often here. In, in, in my mind, it basically means remote raids for some reason or in their mind is devaluing their game in the in a way where like they say they can they cannot sustain it 
for a long time, for a long term. Why that might be? I guess because not only is it, is it like cutting out the part like you have to go to places, but also how how much value you actually get from a remote raid, right? Think about how much value you actually get from a remote raid. Not only can you do it from anywhere, anytime, but you you almost get the same rewards as a person uh, going to a particular going to a particular gym, right? So like it makes it it makes it so you get all all of those things that you don't have to uh, you you get without having to actually go through the process of going to an actual place, and also. Maybe they're thinking because you were so uh, easily get into like megas and legendaries. There's no uh, sense of hype or sense of uh, excitement, I guess, when when kind of raids rotate because there's no like there's no need for a time pressure because you can literally do it anytime, right? Which which also kind of like takes away from I don't know your uh, your local radar or something like that you know what i'm saying i think that's what they mean because this this word sustainable way has come up multiple times and the way i think about it is like they're just trying to they're just trying to prolong the game how do you prolong the game well in a way you, if you make remote raids harder or more expensive it just makes it that much harder to get maybe the uh the shiny you're looking for maybe the legendary you're looking for or maybe what they're talking about earlier the end game of xl right we'll see the change is necessary for the long-term health of the overall game they said that and our and our principles of getting folks outside and exploring the world so them thinking that is not sustainable and trying to prolong the game is coming at the cost of destroying all the global communities that they they created they, they, they're the ones who introduced remote raids and now they're, they're completely flipping the script and basically taking away that aspect of it, making it less accessible, right? So, so they're saying in order for them in their mind to be long-term overall um, healthy, they basically got to cut back on having it accessible to people. Uh, let's see. The world has largely moved back outdoors and remote raid passes have come to dominate the overall experience of playing in a way we never intended. Uh, yeah. It's become essentially a shortcut to playing the game. We've seen an imbalance because the current price of remote passes is matched through the premium battle pass which is distorting the game economy and making the game unsustainable in the long term. There you go again. They say that word again. So this this all comes down to them trying to them trying to them trying to create this Pokemon Go game relevant for as long as possible instead of you know getting it super hyped for maybe like two, three, four, maybe five years. Right? Because there's only so many things that they can do before uh, like the, this really, uh, this current player base I think is going to kind of lose interest because there's going to be no more content, whether you release all the shinies eventually, whether um, all the generations are gone, right? Eventually there's just nothing left. Right? Am I, am I, am I fair to say that? And this uns unsustainable word. I think in their minds, this last half of stuff that they have to release, they're trying to milk it as long as possible. And so, in order to do that, and in order for the health of the game, they basically got to make it harder to get things. At the expense of making it available to tons of people. So instead of trying to be short term, uh, focus they're trying to make this super super drawn out and relevant 
for longer periods. That's in their mind. That's 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 how I'm reading this thing. Uh, but this point here is also something I've mentioned I've mentioned before. The current price of a remote pass is matched to the premium pass. So basically, exactly what we were saying. Why would you ever use a premium pass um, if you get the same value, right, as a remote pass, and you get a skip, and you get a skip? All the all the necessary steps to actually use a premium pass. So in in their mind, they're 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 comparing the two, like value wise, instead of like thinking of it as like oh it's more of a remote race opens up the availability to everybody. So like Niantic side, they're thinking of like oh how do we make this game longer and last longer and draw it out and like um. You know and then the the player side they're trying to they're trying to get as much accessibility and bigger uh player base as long as big as possible when niantic is clearly clearly saying they're not so necessarily worried about making it accessible to everybody right like sure we'll have remote raise as an option but it's going to cost you it's gonna cost you more. You can still have it, but it's gonna cost you almost double. Simply put, with remote prices priced the same as in-person passes, there's no incentive to raid together. In person, this is true, but there is incentive to raid together, um, especially if you're in a rural area. I feel like once again this is viewing it on the on the on the just a niantic side how they're trying to draw out the game people want to raid together i mean essentially it's a cooperative game but right now because of the right now because of the way remote raids work and like they say the pricing of it why would you ever use a one of those premium green passes if you can just use a remote rate, if they're the same price, you get the same rewards essentially, right? Meanwhile, the ease of re rating remotely has led to players rating far more than Niantic intended, unbalancing the availability of Pokemon and the app's end game EXO candy grind. There you have it. That is that is essentially what they're trying to do. This this reconfirms what we just said. They want it to be a grind game. The end game XL candy is their end game to make you continuously catch, open the game, do things. They are purposely making it harder so that you have to go through the grind. This this thing that they keep on talking about. The XL candy grind seems to be what they're really, really after. Uh, because you can get XL candies much easier, especially with the legendaries, if you can just remote them from literally anywhere. And that that becomes unbalanced uh, because if people have more funds than the other, you know, people can have some really, really powerful stuff way earlier than others. Right? Just think about it. Theoretically, if a new legendary comes out and let's say it's actually decent in GBL, let's say you need like a, let's just for example, let's say you need a level 50 Mewtwo and you're a brand new player, okay? You see, you see Mewtwo in the raids for the first time ever, you get the Pokedex and you get 100%. Let's just say, theoretically, you get the first raid, boom, 100%. Then, in that time and moment, you are you are kind of incentivized because you're like hyped about it, and you're like, oh, this as a level maxed out would be awesome. Well, then you go super hard, just remote raid, remote raid, boom, 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 boom. Theoretically, theoretically, you could get a level fifty maxed hundred percent Mewtwo, probably in a day, at home. 
right? I don't know how many raids that takes, but you need 296 plus the plus the original candies, right? To uh, max it out. And so I think that's what they're talking about. Is like theoretically, if somebody could get a hundred percent Mewtwo, and boom, you can get the maxed level fifty Mewtwo in one day instead of you know going to your local raid hour, going to your local park to find the, find the raid. It definitely is like harder. It's definitely it's definitely they're definitely they're definitely trying to make it harder. They're definitely trying to draw out the game by 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 this exo candy grind okay they're trying to make this process right here harder and remote raids simply i would say more than two times makes it easier to get get this process done okay so now we're getting a little bit more insight i like that they're saying end game exo candy because up until now, what has been the end game, right? We don't know. We have nobody, nobody has, I haven't really seen this article, but I haven't really had an idea what the end game in Pokemon Go is. But apparently here's, here's kind of a hint of what their vision is. The end game is to get XL candy so you can eventually max out anything, whether it's level 50 currently or maybe level 100. Okay, so that, that's, that's good to know. We know this is a big change and some folks will have a strong reaction to that we'll acknowledge we're very empathetic to that reaction but we really think that this is the right thing for the overall long-term health of the game once again they say that once again and our desire to make sure it's a great it's great for many 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 years to come so exactly them niantic size maybe even pokemon the pokemon company are probably wanting this to be 20 25 years long like seriously that's 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 kind of like what they're hinting at and this is this is basically clashing from what 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 people in the game currently want is just constant constant content and hype and just things and you know they they might that might be working out short term but they actually want this to be a long term game so they're they're trying to reel back how easy it is to get the XL end game. That is the key right there, folks. The end game is what they're looking at. As a heavily engaged daily player, it's pretty unusual for me to use five remote raid passes in a day. Wait, who is saying this? This is not. Who is saying this? Is this the? Is this the? Uh, this is not the. This is not the developer, right? This is like the article writer or something. Okay, and it remains to be seen how often Niantic will lift that cap, as it says it might for special events. I was. Okay, yeah, it's the article writer. I was keen to find out how many people Niantic expected. To be impacted by the introduction of a cap and how the company's own metrics show the extent to which remote rating was dominating the game currently but i think current i think this this part right here is um just solely from who's this tom phillips deputy editor so he's saying like i don't know what this what this heavily engaged daily player means but apparently they're uh engaged but they don't really use um, remote passes. You know, that's that's his that's his view. It's different for everybody. All right, so this is from this is from Wu and Wu. There's a wide variety of folks who play Pokemon Go. Wu said, generally speaking, the number of people who will be affected by the cap on a day-to-day -day basis is a relatively small part of the total set of folks who play our game. Uh, probably true. Probably true. Because daily, are you, are most people using five remote passes on a day-to-day -day basis? Most people, probably not. Probably not. There's definitely people. It's often sometimes useful to ground what the medium player in Pokemon Go is. It's something I talk about with the team all the time. 
The medium player of Pokemon Go is probably someone like a Singaporean grandma who walks with her senior group for 30 to 60 minutes every morning as part of her exercise and social routine, who mostly focus on catching Pokemon with her friends and maybe very occasionally or maybe not at all raid. Ooh, I don't know about that one right there. That seems a little... Well, once again, this is from Nine Inch Excite. Apparently, they have data on this. And they're saying the medium player is a grandma from Singapore. I don't know about that. That seems a little out of touch. I don't know. I don't know if this is data driven, right? Or if this is truly what's happening. I do agree that Pokemon Go is a more adult game, but I don't think it's to the senior. Is it really? They're saying, they're saying, they're saying more seniors play than the average player is almost a senior citizen than anything else. That's essentially what they're saying. The medium player of Pokemon Go is a Singaporean grandma. I don't know about that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. I'm at the park, right? I'm at the I'm at the events. Not many grandmas and grandparents out playing. More so more so adults, but I wouldn't say it's like I wouldn't say it's like seniors. I could be wrong. I don't have the data. I don't have all the data. You know, there's that's just that's just from my city, right? But it's a global game. Maybe maybe there's just way more uh older asian asian players playing dominating that data who knows or maybe we're just not we're just not close enough to those kind of groups it's important to ground the fact that the vast majority of folks in our game find a lot of value in pokemon go from many other parts of the game beyond raiding okay so this is this is this is kind of like this is kind of like, oh, don't forget about the other aspects of the Pokemon Go, people. It's not all about reading, right? This is basically what they're, they're trying to say here. The game balance and economics of Pokemon Go are now being dominated by remote raids in a way we never intended. And for a segment of the player population, excuse me, this is fundamentally unsustainable. What does that mean? And for a segment of the player population, this, meaning remote raids, is fundamentally uns unsustainable. Okay, I kind of get that. They're saying like not everybody's going to be ra raiding all the time. So it might like deter them from just playing because they feel either FOMO, they can't keep up. Or like, if you need XL, you're going to struggle to have anything viable in Ultra League and Master League, in like GBL, for example. Uh, what else? It constitutes a small, small part of the player population. But it's the player population we care deeply about as they are some of our most engaged players who have invested many, many years and much of their attention and enjoyment into this game. And it's important to make sure the game is balanced for all segments. So they're very vague into, into like what they're talking about here, but let's see, let's see if we can kind of like kind of dissect what they're saying here. So This, starting from here, and for a segment of the player population, remote rating, this remote rating is fundamentally, fundamentally unsustainable. So they're saying like, yeah, there's certain parts of the player base that don't even raid much, so they're gonna be behind and possibly, let's say, getting the XLs for certain things, I guess. Because they're not so much into raiding, uh, but they're saying it's a small, small part of the player base but they care about these people because they're, they're the most engaged players who have invested many, many years and much of their attention and enjoyment to the game. So in my mind, these, these are people who are catch focused and these are people who maybe are um, opening up the game every day, but ne not necessarily raiding. Like they, they open up to like spin a stop or maybe they catch or maybe they, they happen to 
I don't know, maybe maybe do GBL occasionally or something like that. So when they say they're most engaged, they're talking about like how they actually interact with other aspects of the game, not necessarily just rating, right? Because this 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 small small player base that they're talking about is gonna get left behind if it's all about rating, because they're not necessarily doing raids. And then they're in their mind that's making the game imbalance, and they're trying to get 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 um, more of up up all the segments balanced. That's how I read that. Let's see what else. But what is it about the game's balance that Niantic is trying to fix? Thank you. This is what we're asking. This is this is what we're asking. What is the alternative future? Where the current state of the, of the play continues unaltered, Niantic is trying to avoid. Okay, thank you. I should have read this yesterday. Um, sorry. To this, Wu brings up the way played rating in the past as an example of Niantic's framework for thinking about why remote raids or raids as they exist now is unsustainable. When we debuted raids in 2017, the requirement to encounter and defeat a raid boss meant you had to gather several of your friends, family, and colleagues and go out in the same place at the same time to a gym. Okay? And then, once you defeated it, if you wanted to walk with that group to try again, you all had to walk 10, 15, 20 minutes to the next gym together. This 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 is giving me more insight to like what they're thinking this is telling me they don't care about necessarily the global community or how efficient re remote raids makes things they care about the process the journey and the the way you do the raids this is becoming more clear to me why why they're doing this they want the game to be harder they want the game to be about um, obviously trying to go to these places as much as possible. But on the flip side, not everybody can do this. So they, they are basically trying to really amplify and they're trying to make city play as great as possible at the expense of making it accessible to everybody because this this is clearly saying they're worried more about how you how you complete raids than how you how you are able to get into it. right so this is this is giving me more insight to like what they're saying okay let's keep on going They want the game to be as long as possible. They're trying to make it harder. They don't want you to be able to finish the end game, which is to max out things in one day. Of course, you could drive instead, but regardless of how you get there, the journey was important. Niantic seems keen for Rays to return to the state where they were more impactful in experience and more meaningful overall not just a gameplay loop disrupt underscore wolf cheered x200 not just a gameplay loop you can complete 10 times in a row from your sofa so once again this is this is a repeating thing that they're talking about the journey the process you know all the steps you need to take to actually complete a raid in person think about all the things you need to do okay how about thinking about Finding a raid, right? Oh, let's say we find a raid at the park. Think about what you have to do now. Not only do you have the, have the motivation to, you know, get up and go. Uh, let's say you walk there, but at the same time you're walking there, you got to communicate with some kind of group. If you don't have a group, uh, you actually have to go to the park and verify if there's going to be people there, right? You actually go to the actual gym location. Um, you kind of get the walk there. That's the process. 
um, you maybe can hopefully theoretically if it's like timed correctly maybe right at hatch people will be there waiting uh, as well okay so all these steps are missing if you can just remote everything and for them to say like they think that that process that journey is important and you know they they want to they want to kind of reel that back from their side it makes sense this is Niantic I'm talking about. Niantic views the process, the journey, how you actually get to the raid just as important, almost probably more important than making the game so available to everybody. Right? Let's keep going. Every game is about both the goal. Every game is about both the goal as well as the journey to that goal. Who says? Okay, every game is about both the goal, the goal, what is the goal, as well as the journey to that goal. Kind of, kind of vague here. Kind of vague here, but I think uh, what they're talking about, Ed Wu is talking about in this instance is Pokemon Go. The goal in their mind is the XL candy to completely max out stuff. I think in their mind, the end goal, like we we talked about earlier, is being able to max out any given Pokemon, whether it's legendary, a common catch, a mythical. Because every game does have a journey to whatever end goal. But in their mind, the end goal is this XL candy grind. It's making more sense to me. I hope I hope this is making sense for everybody too. I hope everybody's following along. If anybody's kind of like not following along, let me know. Um, let's just uh, hey, what's up, disrupt? Thank you for those bits, by the way. I'm just trying to get to the news without um, constantly going to the comments. But I think I think level 30, 31 should activate the XLs, and you need to you need to keep catching stuff. It's, I don't think it's automatically given to you for every catch. It's a chance. It's a chance for you to get XL. So after level 31, you should be able to get XLs, but it's not a guarantee. Um, let's keep going. This is, once again, this is the Euro Gamer interview with Ed Wu, one of the uh, Pokemon Go VPs. This is where I'm reading from. I, I didn't see this until um, today. The value folks may be thinking about and geared towards is that end goal. But actually the value they're deriving from a game comes from the entirety of the journey to that goal. And remote passes are a shortcut through that entire journey. This is true. This is true. This is this is essentially what's happening. Niantic wants the journey. People want to be able to access the game as readily as possible but you have Niantic's vision and then you have the, the players um, wanting more accessibility and um, easeability I don't think those are the same but yeah because once again Niantic views the end goal being XL candy and maxing out stuff whether it's level 50 now or maybe level 100 in the future and if you just can easily get things maxed out in one day that essentially shortens the lifespan of their game because more people can complete it in a shorter amount of time right makes sense especially legendaries it's especially legendaries because that's like the ultimate thing people are trying to max out many games have shortcuts right who says explain that any game which isn't just geared make your money has to balance that yeah when games offer shortcuts they also ensure these don't distort the overall value of a game by doing things like imposing limitations on the number of items they can be used. So in many ways, this is actually very analogous to a wide variety of games that have similar loops. And where ultimately, a game is about both the journey as well as the destination. Does anybody disagree with this? Is anybody is anybody is anybody like seeing things a little bit differently?
Okay, that may be true, but I think it's fair to say that the way people interact with Pokemon Go's gameplay loops have changed significantly over time. Also true, especially over the past few years as the game has adapted due to the COVID pandemic, almost every bonus introduced in the early lockdown year has been now removed, which makes these changes now seem at best rather late. And at worst, an attempt to tune the game back to the time some players have now permanently moved on from. True. That's that's basically the struggle that they have to deal with. Do you do you risk losing all the new players that came in during the pandemic just to get back to where it was and prolong the game? Right? In their minds? Or do you continue this path? Um and let's say let's say let's say that Let's say theoretically they, 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 they didn't reel back the remote raids. How much longer do you think Pokemon Go would have lasted? What, 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 what does everybody think about what about what about what about that question? If all of if all was the same and they didn't do anything at this rate, how many generations do we have left? How many years until all of the shinies release? Given that each year they're releasing all the shinies for each generation. I would say Five, six years. Max. Right? Um, what else? Remote passes are such a huge part of the game's overall economy, economy and balance for a number of players that we wanted to be careful and thoughtful about approaching changes. Who says? When I ask why these changes are happening now, one reason Niantic is optimistic about these changes is the engagement it has seen in the recent introduction of in-person only raids. Huh? Such as the game's rollout of the Elite Raid events, all oh, which have brought players together for new and ultra rare species. Despite a bumpy rollout, Niantic's data shows people have put their shoes on and turned up. Ooh. This is tricky. On the one hand, I feel like this Disrupt part- underscore wolf cheered. Oh my gosh. X1000. You're the number one Pokemon Go streamer. Yo, Disrupt Wolf, thank you for those bits. I appreciate that. I am not the number one streamer, but I, 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 appreciate, I appreciate that. I'm just kind of, I'm just trying to relay information and I, I want, I want at least our community to kind of just get all the information, kind of, kind of see both sides, right? That's what we're trying to do here. That's why we're bringing this up. I didn't see this article until after the fact, but this apparently was released yesterday. So that's my bad, but uh, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, if, you, if you need any other advice, let me know. Cause it seems like um, you uh, just hit level 31. Anyways, so look, this part right here Disrupt is underscore very wolf. interesting just to me subscribed. because look, they're saying part of the reason that they think that, you know, people want to be out again is because of the data from the elite rates. It's a little bit skewed. It's a little bit skewed because elite raids were a, a hyped up thing. It was a new thing. You kind of forced people to do it with being only in person. Uh, yes, people did show up. I I can I can tell you, I've never seen that big of a crowd at Elite Raids. Um, honestly, probably since last year's Dojo Tour, and we're talking like crowds. We actually streamed it. It was so there was so much activity there as far as uh, connections that it actually prevented me from doing more than one because I couldn't load the game all the all the, my game specifically was just constantly freezing up and so yes in a in a in a way the elite raids did bring people out but I think it was kind of skewed because it was a new thing they forced you to do it as, at a certain time but yeah of course the data is going to show people are showing up now is this going to be the case when it's going to be something as regular as like a Lugia, for example, right now, just a regular Lugia at a park at a um, random Thursday night. Who knows? But to say like 
that is part of the that is one of the reasons <sighs> that's that's kind of weird that's kind of weird i think that data is a little bit skewed right so this part right here although they are there it is true that more people got out but i don't think you should hold the entire change to just like one really bumpy rollout i was lucky enough to get the one reggie drago but i couldn't get anything else i was planning on doing three there was just a, like a huge huge group of people just constantly going through and i haven't seen that kind of group honestly in like two years so yes and no with the reasoning um we need to ensure we are de delivering on the promise of things like elite raids where we have meaningful interesting and new forms of gameplay out there in the real real world who says with the launch of elite raids we were able to see the impact and actually see many people come out again true but skewed yes it's not at the level it was in 2017 but one of the things that's really hardening to us is that when we look at the data folks who are heavily engaged in remote raid passes the vast majority of them are actually also engaging in elite raids and real life experiences once again i feel like this is skewed you cannot you cannot be like oh elite raids people are showing up uh, of course people are showing up because you forced them to because that's the only way to join in right this is and this is a recent thing this is like literally last month i forget when, when it was but like this happened last month this is i don't like this reasoning but i do agree that people did show up because it was hype it was new in fact the proportion of folks who raid remote raid exclusively as they play pokemon go and do not participate in some form of in real life activities are actually very 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 small portion of the total player population and one we actually see decreasing quite a bit over time okay this is this is all of them there's no way people can know this fact here but basically they're saying people who only remote raid they don't do anything else is a very very small portion of the play population i can see that being true i can see that being true but who knows this is this is their word uh, but i think i i think i'm a vast majority of people are doing a combination of remote raids and doing in real life stuff that i agree and i think that's that's the part the combination of being able to do real life stuff with a combination of remote raids is what's uh, really incentivizing for people currently the world has i think evolved and changed year after year from 2021 to 2022 and 2023 and we're seeing these changes in our players and their excitement to engage again and going out into the real world the timing is in part because yes we've de debuted these new features like you leave raids we've been able to see the impact they've had and that folks are excited even if they remote raid okay to also go out there back into the real world that's given us the knowledge and the confidence this is the right thing to do for the overall long-term health of the game so just a little recap they're saying because people are using remote raids now pretty much everybody they're seeing people showing up to elite raids um still because um they have interest in it when in fact they kind of force you to go in person or you can't complete it right I don't I don't I don't see the correlation right there I think I think if they said like they're in their data they see people who elite who remote raid and still have real life um, activities going on I can see that being the real reason but to say like people people who remote raid also showed up to elite raids that is that's terrible of course they're gonna show up Even with all this said, it still feels to me like today's announcement is more stick than a carrot. Okay, this is the editor. Thankfully, Wu suggests much more is on the horizon to 10 players together over the coming months. As the game heads into its typical bustling summer schedule, 
we have an incredibly exciting slate of both new forms of raiding. Okay, we kind of we kind of we kind of dug into this yesterday, but look, what is this new form of raiding they're talking about? Earlier in the article, they mentioned shadow raids. Does that mean you don't have to be near the raid to do these shadows? Is it related to what we talked about yesterday? We saw an interesting um, note about campfire helping you go from campfire and navigating to that specific gym into Pokemon Go. I don't know what that means. Obviously, they're, they're keeping it um, close to their chest here, but this is interesting. Maybe there is a new way to do raiding in the future. Maybe we don't have to do these remote raids. Maybe there's there's like a, a way we can get into campfire and if there's enough interest in there that triggers us able to um, head into the game into Pokemon Go and go to that gym. I don't know. I don't know what it means, but they're, they're saying that like there's going to be some kind of alternative to remote raiding in the coming months. Um, as well as new features in store we're working really hard on. Okay, that's whatever. So while these economic changes are what we're talking about today, it's not the majority of what the team is investing its time and energy on. One of the things that's really exciting to me, having led the development of raids and our social trading and gifting features, as well as our buddy features in PvP over the past few years, is that I really do believe we have a blockbuster slate of summer features that rise to the level of importance for the game. Super vague, Nobody's going to really read into this until it actually happens. I'm super excited about them. I'm sorry that we're not ready to talk about them today, but some of them really are incredible new rating experiences. What do we think about this? Is this is this something to be hyped out about or are they overhyping it to kind of soften the, the remote raid nerf? And we've also got other features in store to bring new meaningful ways to explore the world together as those previous features did. So they're, they are really hyping up this next few months to kind of not only soften, but to kind of give us a new way to do these raiding things. Is the new way to raid going to ease the way we can, we can, we can get to raids? Or is it going to be a way to get um, this Excel grind that they're talking about much simpler. Stay tuned, I guess. There's no, there's no real telling until it happens. But for right now, people are seeing more so like the huge nerve to remote rates. For now, who points to recent features already available in the game that aid players looking to raid more in person, like showing the time left in a lobby without having to enter the lobby itself, as well as adding in the nearby view the number of people in lobbies in gyms nearby so you can see where activity is and go join up yeah that is that has been a recent small change but it hasn't been really significant uh, I, I do see that those features being more significant if they can actually get people to go out again okay so we'll see if that actually works out additionally Niantic's social app campfire will soon be released globally with new features currently in the testing. So it seems like this campfire is the key to what was what is going to happen in the next few months. Not only is it going to be released globally, and just a little background on what campfire is currently, um, it allows you to view any raid anywhere in the world in your in your area. So like you can just open it up and you'll know what raid and where and how much time is left pretty, pretty instantaneously. At the same time, uh, they're trying to make it where you can actually message people or even um, notify other people that you're around. Theoretically, it's good. How they implement it, we'll see. Do people actually switch from their local discords, messenger, or Facebook groups just to use Campfire? Who knows? We are committed to making this a change where it's not just about the economy. Wu continues, but really, meaningful making in-person rating easier and an exciting part of people's lives again so i think all is well if they can somehow if they if they are state if they are themselves stating that in-person reading is going to become easier 
Yeah, it's gonna soften the blow to these remote raids. How do you do that, though? We'll see. How do you make in-person raiding easier? I couldn't finish our chat without a quick question about Shadow Pokemon in raids. An unannounced and unconfirmed feature, oh, which some fans with a keen eye on the game's files believe they have seen some evidence of. They'd be a great candidate for raids, not to say yes or no that we would do it, Wu says. But if we're going to do it, we want it to be a meaningful feature that is interesting and differentiated. And not just like, oh, we're just going to put that shadow Pokemon into a raid rotation. Okay? Generally speaking, we want to do things that feel great when we do them. And are a new, memorable experience that ties people to the Pokemon they are encountering and catching. To the location and to the memory of actually working with others to take on something really epic. Oh, Shadow Pokemon are gonna be epic? They're gonna be that hard? So yeah, it's a great idea, but let's put let's put it that way. Okay. Pretty pretty uh pretty vague here. They're not saying it's confirmed, but also not saying it's not gonna be a thing, but if they're gonna actually do it, they wanna make it epic, whatever. On how remote raid changes will affect Niantic financially. Wow, this article was actually pretty good. The goal here is not short-term revenue, Wu says. Of course, imposing a cap goes to show this is not about extracting more money in, even though we are raising prices. This is well-balanced, where we really believe this is not going to create a short-term revenue impact for us. Whoa! At the end of the day, we are a business that wants to provide this experience for our trainers for many years to come. There's a long-term sustainability impact to the changes, and that's the reason behind them. And there you have it. They, in fact, acknowledge that it's not about it's not about it's not about the short term, but even 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 to hedge that even with this change, they don't think their revenue short term is going to impact them. That is insane. So they think all the people who are doing remote raids right now are going to equal or slightly be less than um, than right now. So basically, the, uh, the the amount of people remote raiding are going to equally move to in person. Wow. I don't know about that. They're definitely going to take a huge if not, they're definitely going to take a hit to short term. Because once again, we talk, we talk about using these premium passes. There's several steps that you have to go through just to get to the rate. Wow, that is actually kind of crazy that they said that. I think that's just smokes and mirror here. Uh... But I think long term, I think if, 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 if what they're trying to focus on is the long term longevity of this game, yeah, that this is this is this is this was going to happen. Um, on Campfire as a tool to add players to existing community groups. OK, this is this is a very good article not a lot of stuff that people are really looking into, but Extra tidbits. One of the things that really that's really important to me and to Niantic has been the strength of our local communities. It's something we are deeply grateful for that there are folks all around the world who take their own time and effort to lead and form local groups. And those exist on a variety of different kinds of channels. What we're trying to do with Campfire is to provide a meaningful way for those existing groups to find people in their local communities and find people who are interested but maybe not aware they can group up and get together and for those local communities to grow theoretically this is nice and dandy but like how, how are you going to get people from established uh, groups and other um, other apps to actually go go over to, to, to campfire right that's a huge jump. It's not. It's not. It's not that easy. 
it's really not that easy of just saying like oh we have an easy way for you to add existing players if you just go to a campfire on whether future future new features or types of race will be in person only the new features that are coming really span the gamut and it's maybe not quite as binary as remote versus local raids. Hold on. Oh. They actually have something in the works that is in between remote raiding and local raids. Oh, that's kind of cool. That would make sense. If they actually find a way to blend how you do local raids and like remote raids that actually is actually cool i'm excited about that i don't know what this is but this, they're obviously saying there's going to be a new feature that's going to be able to be a hybrid of what currently what we have remote and local so there's going to be a way to kind of do raids from a distance right rating is a very particular feature right Let's take, for example, gifting and social, a very different kind of feature, but with the elements of exploration and social interaction, even if it's not real time or in person. I'm very, very excited to see the uptick by our player community of sending postcards after uh, Vivian, or Viv, Vivian uh, launched. It's consistent with Niantic's values of exploring the world, finding new places, and sharing those places with your friends, even though that might be remote and asynchronous. Synchronously. Synchronized. It's in a way that encourages everybody to go out and explore the world. And when you do get the chance to come together, to meet and play the game together, it becomes all the more meaningful because of that time that you spend sending postcards from all around the world to each other. So I wouldn't put it necessarily into local versus remote features. That kind of binary bucket there are many meaningful ways we can inspire folks to explore the world and have social interaction and i think our future will reflect that diversity of our player base in the way they approach the game huh okay once again very big very vague in what they're saying but they're saying like you know basically you can do things in the real world which helps you um, remotely or interact with people uh, later on. Interesting. On the long standard remote rate damage buff coming a permanent feature. We're not making other changes right now. Over time, we might. One thing that's important is a variety of limitations around remote raids have not addressed the fundamental issue of the imbalance they create in the game's economy, but a daily cap absolutely will. And that gives us a lot of more confidence and freedom to make other changes without worrying about their distorting effects. So nothing to announce there, and we are really trying to keep the changes simple. Frankly, we could go and change a wide variety of things, but right now we're trying to keep it simple. So essentially, Remote raid damage buff is probably going to get removed eventually, but not right now. On the likelihood of EX raids returning. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're trying to evolve them in a variety of ways. I was very close to the development of the EX raids. This is Ed Wu talking about. They're very near and dear to my heart. At the same time, I want to acknowledge there were ways in which it was difficult to schedule them and to get the right set of folks scheduled to play together at the right place at the right time 100 percent if you were if you were doing ex in the past you know exactly what they're talking about i think it was often a source of frustration for both the community and for us and so we're looking to evolve ex raids and you can see that in the things like e elite raids this is not to say we wouldn't try ex raids again and i don't want to categorically say we will never will, but we are also cognizant of some of the frustrations folks have around them. Anytime we want to approach it again, we want to make sure those are well addressed. Okay, interesting. Not really committing to EX raids, but I guess elite raids are the evolution to it. And on the future of Arceus, um, plus whether it may finally arrive via elite raids. 
I don't want to commit to anything, but let me be clear about that. But anytime we introduce a Pokemon that folks really are excited about, we want that to be a really epic experience. One thing I point to is Kecleon, which was hidden away for years. We wanted to do something which, which befitted that Pokemon and the weight and excitement for it. I'm really glad with how that turned out in practice. It generated a lot of excitement and got folks to notice their local Pokestops a little bit more in a way they hadn't before. This part is true. It is cool that they, they limited it to only Pokestops, right? It's like a secret sneaky way for, for them to get people to go to stops. But also it comes at the expense of places where they don't have a lot of stops. If you don't have a lot of stops, you can't really have a high chance to find Kecleon. Anytime we want to take on something that's exciting in that fashion, we really want to do it justice. That's memorable and that ties people's memories to the location they visited and the people they were with. Whenever we take on a challenge that epic and interesting, rest assured that's how we will approach it. Interesting. Okay. Woo! That was really good. I like that article. I I'm I um once again this is from the Eurogamer Pokemon Go uh interview um with Tom Phillips here. Okay. I should I, I wish I saw this yesterday. It would have helped piece things a lot more together. Um but this 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 had a lot of good info that the Pokemon Go live um, post just doesn't go over it's it's like it's more like headlines the pokemon go live side the euro gamer side kind of gets the reaction and reasoning from a niantic side maybe you still don't agree with it but they give you the reasons that was a lot what do we think about all that any 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 comments feedbacks any criticism on what they're saying here or like stuff that we missed that, 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 that right there helped me helped me at least understand some of what, what they're talking about d2swtp just subscribed by the way thank you for those subs thank you to d2 hello what, how, how you doing uh once again disrupt thank you so much for that sub and those bits you're awesome I don't know i don't know how you found us but appreciate you joining let us know if uh we can help you in any way check out our discord exclamation mark discord if you would um kind of want to join a community how you doing d2 um ashton says so you're either at the raid or you're remotely there what's in between that it doesn't make sense once again they're they're like slowly um getting it uh they're slowly letting this news kind of taper out and then they're trying to like hype people up I don't, I don't think they're gonna release this information until closer to release date because right now they're kind of preparing for this 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 backlash and this storm right this 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 news right now is like what's on everybody's mind and I, I, I guarantee you, not a lot of people have read this Eurogamer interview or any of these details. But this this interview and this uh, this article actually explains kind of Niantic's side. Whether you agree with it or not, that's another story. But I think people I think people just didn't know the reasoning. A lot of people are like, why would you why would you change the remote rates right now? Why what's the reason between this? What is the benefit? You know what is what is this? What is this? Uh, what is the point? You know. But apparently, they have stuff in the works to kind of soften the blow of remote raids. Potentially, something in between local raids and remote raids. They never say what it is, but they're teasing that. They're saying the next couple months, when it's like their busy season of all these summer events, this is going to be implemented. Possibly. Uh, possibly and. Primarily due disrupt to disrupt underscore probably... wolf has gifted five subs to viewers. Oh, disrupt! What is going on? I appreciate that. What 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 is going on, my friend? Where did you come from? How did you find us today? Thank you. If you got a, if you got a gifted, please give a thanks to our friend disrupt. Thank you. Um, 
so yeah, in the coming months, we should be seeing these changes, whether it actually pans out to how they actually envisioned it. We'll see. Time will tell. They're very bold in saying like short term revenue is not going to take that big of an impact. I doubt that. That's that's a very, very, very bold statement. Um, Disrupt. How are you doing? Where are you from? Did any did anybody have any anything to uh, to say about this article or about the recent remote uh, rate changes? If not, we're gonna go into a potential new event. Disrupt is from North Carolina. Is that is that is that what that means? Are you a, are you a are you a returning player? Are you are you just trying to find raids these days? What's your what's your situation? We've actually we've actually been playing since the beginning. Um, I would say mid July. I would say we're playing. We've been playing pretty consistently from there. So we've seen the entire Pokemon Go era, the evolution. The, uh, the downfall, the changes, the craziness, and now it looks like we're entering a, another era of the game. For better or for worse, who knows? But in, in Niantic's mind, this is going to be better for the long-term health of the game. You're, you're a returning player? How... How recent, how recent did you just return, Disrupt? Welcome back. This is kind of a interesting time to come back. Um, if you if you just recently came back, you're about to you're about to experience kind of a big change with the uh, remote. Oh, you you came back yesterday. Oh. Oh. Okay. So. Okay. Just. <laughs> wow. What a time to come back. Yesterday they dropped the bomb. They dropped, they dropped, they dropped the uh, the fact that they're gonna kind of basically make it harder for people to remote raid, and we just basically went over why and the reasoning. Oh, you found us during Mewtwo event. Oh, okay, cool. Oh wow, then it's been a while. Welcome back. Welcome back, my my gosh, Mewtwo, huh? Mewtwo event last year. Or Mewtwo event like two years ago. Ashton says maybe they'll do the big release during the GoFest they haven't even announced. Yo, Ashton, if 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 previous year, if previous years has been any indication, they usually release the the big feature before GoFest because they, they kind of want that big feature to be used in in their busy season. So I'm probably expecting the big features that they're trying to implement um definitely before june possibly in may possibly in april late april who knows but we don't even know gofest dates so we can't even talk about that yet two years ago oh two years ago you found us okay yeah yeah so wow yeah 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 you've you've kind of you kind of like entered when remote raids were kind of a, a, a huge thing and now you're kind of coming back when remote raids are not going to be a thing there's going to be a pretty big um change as far as remote raid is is uh, going to be used disrupt just a heads up obviously we just kind of gone over that and i don't know i don't i don't know your playing environment but it's going to be harder to, to remote raid Okay, so that is that. That was actually a really cool article. I don't know if people saw that already. Very insightful information. Two takeaways that I got from it. Niantic views the end game in Pokemon Go being the Excel candy grind. With that in mind, they want they want you to be grinding for that Excel candy. And every sense of that word they don't want you to be able to 
uh, what they call shortcut and just be able to complete a, a max level 50 or max Mewtwo in one day from home, theoretically. And then number two, they, they basically want the game to last as long as possible. And so they want to make it harder short term now or I would say just harder in general so that their game could be um, more more viable for a longer period than pretty much I don't I would say five years is what they currently were on pace to have because it looks like they're releasing shinies every single year the whole decks or the whole generation the whole whole region so by the time that happens you know what is people what are people going to go after okay so that's that